There once was a king of Ayodhya named Sagara, who was anxious to have a son. He provided the Saint Brigu many penances over the years, and finally, the Saint was happy to announce that Sagara's worship would be rewarded. You shall have a glorious name, and one of your queens shall bear a son to maintain your race and to become your heir. And of the other, there shall be some sixty thousand born to you, said the saint. Now the wives of Sagara were most anxious to know which of them would have one son and which would have the vast number predicted. Kasini wished for one child, while Sumathi was happy to have sixty thousand. Time passed and Kasini gave birth to a son called Ansuman, who became the heir. And Sumati, the younger of the two wives, gave birth to a gourd whose rind broke to reveal 60,000 babies. About this time, King Sagara decided to make a horse sacrifice in order to become the reigning Indra, or king of the gods. As the preparations were being made, Ansuman was given the task of following the horse set apart for the sacrifice, for according to ritual it was to be set free and allowed to wander for a whole year, wherever it would. Now, the present Indra began to fear that such a sacrifice would rid him of his crown, and veiling himself as a demon, he arrived on the appointed day and drove the horse away. King Sagara called at once for his sons to search for the stolen horse, begging them to pursue the demon that had caused it to escape. And so the sons of Sagara began their search, each digging one league in depth towards the center of the earth but still they could not see the horse. The gods were alarmed by the digging of the earth and they went to Brahma to advise him of the destruction. Brahma was calm for the earth was protected by Vishnu and the sons of Sagara would be turned to ashes for their handiwork. The gods returned home to wait for retribution and as they did so, the sons dug on. 60,000 leagues were dug into the earth without any sight of the horse and the princes returned to their father, requesting guidance. Sagara bid them to dig on and to continue their search until the horse was found. The sons began to dig once again until there before them stood Vishnu. Thinking that the glitter in his eyes was one of welcome, the sons rushed forward to greet him. Moments later, they were but ashes. King Sagara waited disconsolately for news of his sons, but none arrived. Soon he sent his grandson, Ansuman, to look for them, but he learned nothing of their fate. Ansuman traveled widely, searching for news, but he remained unrewarded until the day when he reached the very spot of their deaths. Ansuman fell to the ground with dismay when he realized the significance of the ashes. As his tears hit the ashes, his uncle Garuda appeared and offered him consolation, holding carefully the harness of the horse that had been lost so long ago. Prince Ansuman returned to the kingdom. Garuda had given him some advice, and he thought carefully about it before he approached his grandfather. Garuda has said, whispered Ansuman, that if Ganga would turn her stream below, her waves would wash the ashes of the two princes pure again, and the 60,000 leagues would be restored while you took Indra's place in the heavens. The king thought carefully, thoughts which carried over 30,000 long years, he had no idea how to induce Ganga to come down from the heavens, and at last he went there himself. After his death, the task became his grandson's and then that grandson's sons. And so it was finally given to Bhagirath to accomplish the work, for he had no son. After many years of austerity, Brahma came to Bhagirath and said to him then, You have been blessed, for your austerities have won my grace. What can I do to help you? I would like Ganga to be let loose with her holy wave, so that the ashes of the heroes shall be washed pure, and my kinsmen, Sagara's sons, shall ascend to heavenly bliss for the rest of their days. And please, he added, I wish for a son so that my house shall not end here with me. And Brahma said to him then, If you pray for this, so it shall be. Bhagirath stayed in his position of prayer for one year, even as Brahma returned to heaven. Shiva, pleased with the devotion, promised to sustain the shock of the waters. Ganga, however, was not pleased with the command that she descend to earth. Ganga threatened to wash Bhagirath into hell with her waters, and as she made for the earth, she was caught by the wily Shiva, 
who held on to the coils of her hair until her anger abated. Then she fell into the Vindu Lake, from which came the seven sacred streams of India. One branch of the stream followed Bhagarath wherever he went. At last, Bhagarath reached the ocean and ascended to the depths where Sagara's sons were lying. Ganga followed until her waters touched the ashes. Suddenly their spirits rose, and like glittering birds they entered heaven in a burst of light. The faith in this legend has not died. Indeed, one of the most common places of pilgrimage in India is Sagara Island, where the river Ganges and the ocean meet. Sagara's sons and his son's sons rank high in heaven and will forevermore.